We lived in a, a small one bedroom back to back, um, all of us, uh, with, I, I suppose you could term it a kitchen, it was about two foot by three foot. Uh, didn't have any bathrooms, It was the cellar was used as a bathroom, you had a little hole in the floor and poured buckets of water on yourself and an outside toilet. I remember the cobbled streets, uh, I think you could probably count the number of brown faces in Bradford on one hand at that time, there were about half a dozen families and that was it. Most of the sort of Asian families that came in, in the sort of 60s and 70s was around an area called Great Horton. I didn't actually go to school till I was seven, six or seven, because my nobody knew I existed because my mum and dad never registered me. So I played and, you know, um, learnt whatever I did on the streets, actually. And then they realised I was here and I was sent to immigrant school because every, every Asian person was sent to immigrant school. So this bus used to come and pick us up and take us miles away somewhere uh, to an immigration centre where... Uh, they supposedly taught you English and, and other things. So I didn't really learn to read and write until I was about nine. Uh, sort of struggle with that. Grammar school was uh, a baptism by fire. So the first day you went there, you know, it, there were kids that were twice the size of you. Literally the first day we went there, we were beaten up, all the money taken off us, not a lot of it, but everything taken off us and that, that was the baptism by fire. Probably about eight or nine, um, carving a piece of wood into the shape of a bat, um, using either milk crates or brief, school briefcases as wickets, and a tennis ball. And that was my whole cricketing world, probably for about six or seven years, but played all day, day and night, every day. Uh, most of it was on back streets. The parks came later on. Um, so we had a, a field near the house called Spencer Field where a proper team played and we used to play on the boundary edges and, and sort of watch these adults play. You know, it was an escapism from the harsh reality of life actually because, you know, I suppose the early days don't hold many happy memories in terms of how hard it was for my parents and watching them work and and my sister dying and my brother getting poorly. The happy memories came from cricket. I played for anybody and everybody, I think. I played on a Tuesday night for a, a club. I played for the general post office on a Wednesday night. I played junior cricket on a Thursday evening. And I played Saturday at, um, in the Bradford League. And then Sunday, um, I played for a whole variety of sort of clubs. And then when the Kaidiasm League was formed, I played every Sunday in the Kaidiasm League. I, I got to the Yorkshire Senior School's trials and that was about as far as we got. Actually, if I'm honest, I don't think. Um, I think there was there were about six nets, I remember, and loads of people watching. Uh, I don't think they actually looked at the two nets in the corner where me and, uh, and lads from the local school were there. I ended up playing for one of the first Asian teams that were ever set up called um, Bradford Indians uh, that played. And then Interlink was another team. And... I played for Bradford Jim Carner, Graduates Association, uh, Great Horton CC, um, Al Fala Cricket Club. Uh, I'm literally, I mean, people used to come at 10 o'clock in the morning and say, can you play today? And, and there wasn't a big issue about registration in those days, so I'd grab my bag and I'd go and play. We all heard about it, the, the 11 um, best cricketers from the Kaidiasm League playing against a Yorkshire 11, uh, second 11. Uh, and beat them. Um, and I think for the Asian lads at the time, it was almost a vindication of saying, there's a load of talent here. We're just struggling to get through. Hats off to the, the people who, who sort of put the money into setting this league up. Um, there's lots of questions, should you have a, an Asian league and should you have, you know, should everybody mix? But in those days it was, you know, it was a struggle if you were the only one. If you didn't eat meat, if you didn't drink, if you weren't part of the culture, you know, you didn't dress, you know, with the right gear. And this was comfortable. And you still got a good standard of cricket. Um, maybe a bit more T20-ish than, you know, <laughs> the standard 50 overs. 
two or three of the young lads went to play in the Bradford League, but men, most didn't survive. And it wasn't about not being good enough, it was just about fitting in. They just didn't feel comfortable. I was a slight oddball in the sense that I don't think many Indians played in the Kaidism League, very few. And obviously the Kaidism League was mainly Pakistani. Um, and, and most of the teams I played for were as well, besides Indian CC and Interlink. That was a combination of both. 35% of all grassroots cricket in this country is played by South Asian young players. That's a third of the ECB's future cricketers. It recognises that despite 35% being at grassroots level, we've only got a few percent, the Moeen Ali's and the Adil Rashid's, playing in our test matches. So the access is great at a particular level, but the access is not great through the system. The experiences are clearly different. I'm probably thinking 10 years. Um, I think I'd like to be able, I would hope in 10 years time to not talk about South Asian cricket, but just to talk about cricket. And we would have, you know, one of the best teams in the world and they'll be made up of all the diverse populations of this country. Uh, that'll be success. And I think that's what I'll push to do. I'll play my little part in it.